Hello everybody, Reggie time here and in just a moment we're going to be reviewing some hands that I've played on um, some regular 20 nl tables in relatively tough pools. I've tagged the hands whilst I've been playing so um, it's the first time I'm reviewing them and then we're going to paste all the hand histories into GTO Wizard after I've reviewed them and given my thoughts to see how accurate my play was in a GTO sense. Where am I making plays that are losing EV etc. Hopefully it's going to be interesting for you guys to watch i know i'm going to be very interested in doing it um so yeah um hope you enjoy it if you do enjoy it wait till you get to the end and hit the like button if you're bored already you don't want to watch hit the like button before you leave please and um if you do enjoy it and you get through um the video and some interesting spots that you feel you want to come on please do leave a comment i always enjoy reading them and i very often respond to them um so without further ado Let's get into the hands. Here we have pocket sixes. Um, bog standard looking reg opens under the gun. We flat the big blind, all perfectly normal up to now. Um, this flop. I guess we can have some leads here on this board. Um, but it's not something I do very often. I do check here. Bill and Bet's half pot, which is kind of like, eh, uh, I mean, he might be, I don't know. I don't know what his bet size should be. I guess we'll find out later. Um, I like to go for the raise here, which I think is very reasonable. Um, we have some equity against that like, top of his range sort of stuff, like aces, kings, queens, etc. Um, I don't think he's going to have all the sets at full frequency under the gun. Not many people are raising all pairs. Maybe this guy is. Um, maybe not, we don't know. Um, I think this race is reasonable. Opponent three bets. Um, now I guess we have the option of call or jam, never fold. I went with call. Turn pairs to five. We check. Bill and bets one third pot. And I remember this. I decided all in was going to be my play. Um, Trying to maybe just convince someone to fold an over pair. I mean, how likely that is, I don't know. Um, I didn't really care very much because even if they did look me up with an over pair, um, we still obviously have some equity we have. Um, but obviously, if they've got aces, um, two of our... Oh, no, ignore me. Um, I think two of our outs are going to be dead, but they're not. And so we have, like, eight outs versus top of range um, and I think quite often maybe we get some folds how many folds we need I don't know but anyway I went all in and Bill unfolded and I felt like a fucking genius but let's see if I actually was a genius so here we are now in the GTO wizard hand replay I pasted the hand in and I clicked the replay so pre-flop call got us two ticks flop check but actually prefers leading but leading slightly more than checking. We checked. Bill and Bet, we can call here or raise. It prefers calling, but it doesn't mind raise. Uh, the ideal raise size is to 6.75 big blinds. I raised to 8.25, so a little bit bigger than, than it wanted. Um, Bill and three bets, and we just have a pure call here. Turn, checking pure, so we got that bit right. Bill and should now bet. This size, 11.9 apparently. Um, anyway, it goes with like one third pot. And when we to call here, absolutely pure. Calling here is like decent EV. It's still plus EV to jam like I did, but it's like significant EV drop off. Probably because we're just going to be like owning ourselves against their value range too often, I imagine. Um, so yeah, first hand. We had a blunder. There's the red triangle. That was a blunder. How many blunders are we going to have? Who knows? But I suspect it probably won't be the last. On to the next one. We have ace-queen. We open a middle position. Called by an unknown player on the button. Yes, we get this flop. I check. Bill and Betts half pot. I call. Turn diamond. 
we check Willem Betts big I call we reverse straight I check Willem checks back so I guess I've marked this hand for um, how often should I be seeing in the flop? Didn't really want to start building a huge pot here with this queen. Yeah, it's a relatively strong hand, but the board can change quite significantly. Um, maybe we just bet because we've got the ace of diamonds and we just go potty on like a diamond run out like this. I think this flop check is a mistake. I think GTO will tell me off a little bit. I think it's not a pure bet with this hand, but he's going to tell me off a little bit. Um, and then river, when we live with a straight, do we block? So I guess those are my two questions. I think turn, once we, as played flop, I think turn is just standard. I don't think there's any raising the turn when he bets big. And then river, it's do we block or do we seek value? Uh, villain here ended up checking back with pocket sixes. And I guess I've tagged this hand for did I miss value? I don't think I did but uh, in, in the real world, but let's see how GTO thinks I played the hand. Um, compared to how I think I played the hand. So, good news. We've got two ticks up here. We're in double tick territory, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, pre, obviously, we got double tick. Flop, checking 80%. Wow. I thought we, I knew it, I thought it were mixing, but I thought it would be, I didn't think it'd be like as strong as 80% check, um, which is what we did. Bill and Bet's half pot. We have the, Double tick call, happy days. Turn, double tick check. Big bet, everything else would have been a, would have been an inaccuracy. So we get correct with the call again. And yeah, I was thinking, do we block? And it's just having no bets here. Any bets would have been a blunder. This would have been like pretty bad. These would have been like pure blunder. Uh, checking again. So yeah, happy days. We've had one blunder and one Two tick the entire way through. So uh, I'm going to keep a score. That's 1-1. One, one. Reggie versus GTO is 1-1. One, one. On to the next hand. Ace, five of clubs. We open. We get a call from a... Well, this my red tag means I think the player might be like on the more aggressive side reg. 25-21, 10% three bear. Um, seems to be like stealing correctly. That's why he's got the red tag. Um, we flop ourselves a flush draw. Villain checks. Um, I can go either way here. Obviously, we have a lot of equities. So There'll be nothing wrong with betting. Uh, I think we can also do some checking back though. I do go with the bet. 60% pop. Villain calls. Turn offsuit jack. Villain checks. Um, I think after big bet in flop, do we want to start slowing down a little bit? If he's called. He's got a big bet. If he's better, called a smaller bet, I think we can just go with like a large bet. But when we go with a bigger bet, do we now start playing a bit more passively on turns when we don't improve? I, I elected not to. I went with a large bet. Bill and check raises. I think we only have call here. And then we river the effective notes. <clears throat> Bill and checks. And then it's at what size do we go? Um, probably all in, I guess. I went with non all in. She's just fucking weird. Just go all in. If I'm going to do this, just go all in. I don't know why I didn't go all in. Yeah, this is a mistake for me, I think. And villain folded anyway. So let's see what GTO thinks of that one. So, oh dear, here we have an inaccuracy. Or whatever that one means. Maybe it's a blunder. It's, it's not good anyway. It's fucking red with an exclamation mark. That ain't good. You, that's not what we're looking for. So let's see when we get the mistake. Um, we open. That's obviously fine. Flop. He checks. Um, check. We can bet half pot. We can bet three quarters pot, so I'm going to be fine with this. We're getting a tick. Um, he calls. Check again. I thought we'd do a bit more checking after big bet got called, but when we do bet, we again we are using big bet with our with our bets. Um, not doing it at a particularly high frequency. 
but we're doing it. New goal is big. Villain raises. We get the two ticks for the call. Villain checks. Yeah, all in. This is where we're getting the blunder. I knew it was an all in. Uh, apparently, we're only losing a tiny amount of EV. Um, but yeah, I thought the river might be the might be the major fuck up in that hand, and it was. Just go all in, Rich. I don't know why I didn't go all in. Um, I would definitely have considered going all in, and for some reason, I chose not to go all in, but just overbet to a different amount. Fucking weird, <laughs> bit shit. But um. And there we go. That's right. We're doing this stuff, isn't it? And I, but the thing is, I already knew that was an all in. I didn't need GTO to tell me that all in was the play here. Um, I just didn't do it this time for who knows what reason. On to the next one. We have a seven nine of diamonds. Small blind. Looks like could be a potential tight reg open. So we call flop trips. He bets just over half pot. Um, could contemplate raising here, but I think calls the standard line. Which is what we did. Ace turn. He now bets again on the larger size. Um, so he's saying he's got, basically saying he's got a seven, isn't he? And it jacks full. Seven. Maybe he's just betting an ace. Who knows? Um, but he's not, he, he doesn't think he necessarily, he shouldn't be betting a jack, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't really understand what he's trying to say with like on this board with this sizing, kind of just over half pot, bit weird. Um, anyway, we just called again. I guess I'm presuming he's like bluffing or he's trying to thin the value bet, and maybe he stabbed an ace on the flop. Now he's hit an ace. Maybe he's trying to like value bet an ace. Um, River is the break. Now he checks, and then it's a matter of what size should we go here. Um, and I think we're going to want to go pretty big. I mean, there's not many draws I've missed. Um, but I think Villain's Range is going to... I think like seven continues betting. I think like anything that's got us beat here doesn't check the river. Or for very few do. Maybe if he's got a hand that can check raise. If he's got jacks full or aces full, he can check raise them. Um, but I think... Generally speaking, that's not happening very often in these games. I think when villain checks, they've either got something they're just giving up with or they're going to try and bluff catch. And so I think a large size is in order. I went with small over bet and villain called with ace 10 off. So let's see what the wizard thinks of this one. So we have an orange, which isn't ideal. Um, let's see where we made either the mistake or many mistakes. Uh, so pre-flop, we can three bet this hand at some frequency and we can call. So we get the two tick call. Flop, he bets half pot. We get the two tick call. Turn, he's bet this and we get the two tick call again. So it's going to be the river sizing it doesn't like, isn't it? Check, uh, river, he wants all in again. It really wants the all in again. It wants... Like one third pot, he wants two thirds pot. Yeah, so we can use like different sizes here. He didn't like my small over bet. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pretend they understand why it prefers. I mean, if we look at like, the EV difference between all the different sizes, it doesn't appear to be very much. Um, I guess this just makes most money versus bluff catchers, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm not giving myself too much of a blunder for that. I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't consider going all in on the river. Going all in for 3x pot on relatively dry bars like this isn't something that's in my game, but absolutely, clearly, it's maybe something that should be. Um, let's look at the next hand. So here we have the 5 4 suited. We have a, what looks like a loose, aggressive opponent opening middle position. I decided to three bet the five four suited, and I guess I'm doing this because of my opinion of this guy. If this was say this person, this player or player with these more like tighter stats, this wouldn't be a feature of my game. But if I think someone's probably too wide, 
uh, then I'm going to start bringing these sort of players in. This could be a huge mistake. Who knows? Um, we get a cold four bet from this player. Um, I don't think we can fold. Maybe we can. But I think when we when we three bet these hands, we're meant to just defend them. But are we meant to defend them versus the cold four bet? We're going to find out. Uh, I elect to call anyway. We flop a pair. Villain checks. Do we now bet our pair to like deny equity from like ace king? Don't know. What did Reg do? Reg checked back. Turned to four because I've been sun running in the last day. Uh, villain now bets. We call river. We river full house. Villain goes all in. We obviously call. And villain had two kings. So that's the hand. Let's see if we made any huge errors in it. So straight away we're getting the the orange um, error. So pre we sh hang on, pre we should just fold the hand. Sometimes call, never raise. So we're pretty much in a non-existent spot from the off here. Um, we did raise anyway. And then the cold four bet comes in, and then we're just supposed to call this all the time. Um, flop, we're meant to check back half the time. We can do some betting, as I suspected. Turn, he bets, we're just pure calling. And then obviously, he goes all in, we're pure calling. So pre flop was the mistake because it's just not a thing. The three bet is. Let's just say I rolled very, 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 very low. And let's not pretend I'm doing that probably close to pure versus players who I think are a bit out of whack with their frequencies um, and with their, like, with their ranges. So, yeah, we won the pot, didn't we? On to the next hand. King nine of diamonds. We... Three bet versus someone who's so far opened seventy eight percent of hands from the button. Um, villain calls. We flop a king. Um, I should probably range bet this flop. I imagine king eight two dry. I mean backdoor diamonds. I don't. I think that's going to be a mis pretty serious mistake. Uh, villain. And the reason I would have checked this, I guess, is because this villain's post of aggression stats are above uh, population average by quite some margin. Uh, we call. Turn jack. We check again. Villain checks back. River king. We decide to go with the pot size bet and villain folds. I think that one might have been butchered in many, many ways. I'm thinking we're getting some red here, but let's see. So we've only got an orange, which is good. I thought we were getting a red. It's not good, but it's better than we thought. Uh, sorry, hang on. Pre-flop. Yeah, it's three bet all the time. Or nearly all the time. Uh, flop, yeah, check. I thought that was going to be a pretty big mistake, checking the flop. Um, it's just like never checking this flop. I guess I'm just trying to exploit my opponent. Um, but this, if, we, if we're doing something that we should literally never be doing, then I think that's maybe taking it too far. Um, we check, villain bets. Now, obviously, we just call. Turn. Guess having checked the flop, we just check now. Yeah, we do. Uh, river. We're supposed to lead for block. We're not supposed to lead for pot. <laughs> so, yeah. We fucked up on two occasions, and both of them were pretty big fuck-ups. So, yeah, um, I've, I haven't been keeping score. I've, I've opened an up and I forgot to keep score. It feels like we're drawing at the minute. It feels like we've done some pretty good and some not so good. This would definitely go in the not so good column. Next one, we have two jacks. Limp. Oh, that's, well, okay, we'll just review this one quickly because we're not going to be able to do it in GTO. So, never mind, because it won't, it won't accept this limp, of course. Um, so we just run it through, we check, set, villain bets big, we call, turn a flush draw, uh, turn a flush draw, with that top set, we check, villain bets tiny, um, 
amazing. It doesn't feel good to me. I called. We delivered a full house. We checked. Villain went all in. We called and villain had a complete rock. Right, okay. Uh, nothing to see there. Queen six heads up, okay. Um, villain has opened. We've called. We plop top pair. Check. Villain bets one third. We call. Check. Villain bets over bet. And in my opinion, these turnover bets are quite often draws. Um, I mean, they're not meant to be, but I think population usually is like, is unusually highly weighted to draws in these spots, in my opinion. Um, I called. River is an eight. And they go with the second over bet. And my opinion on river over bets is they are fucking nutted. Um, now, the obvious draw from the flop and from the turns got there's the six five has now got there. The jack ten has got there. Um, I think this is just a fold. I think it's a pretty fucking easy fold too. Um, I know I didn't fold this because that's why it's tagged. Because I just I went with my turn read. It's always a semi bluff and just like pin my hopes on him having diamonds. I think this is a really, really, really bad call from me. Um, I mean, we don't block diamonds. We do block six five. Whatever. I mean, a lot of shit. I don't even know what I'm going to be continue talking about. I'm not even going to demean you guys by me trying to like explain how I think my blockers work here because. Fuck them. I'm not really good at that sort of shit. I think we should just fold this. So upon review, I do not like this call. But I made it. And I won the pot against an absolutely monstrously random bluff. So, um, yeah, it worked out this time. But I don't think... I think turn is fine. I think river isn't. Maybe turn can just fold. Because that, that top pair is just so fucking weak. Maybe even turn to fold. Uh, let's see. Well, we've got a tick, so that's good. Um, flops, obviously, pre-flop. Uh, sorry, not obviously. We can throw, we should three bet, actually. I said, obviously. It's pure three bet heads up, apparently. Did not know that. Well, not pure, but it's close to pure. 75% that's pure in my book. Um, flop, we check. Villain bets. Uh, we can call our raise, apparently. <laughs> Turn we check. Villain over bets. We have a pure call. River we check. Villain over bet again. And we have a pure call again. So, yeah. Um, even though I think population aren't finding this very often. I mean, in GTO world, this is just going to be like, oh, you meant to go all in sometimes. What do you want, me? What are you fucking talking about all in? What are you fucking talking about? Anyways, we're not meant to fold. I think in reality, we probably should be doing leaning towards fold here quite often. Um, as we said in the on the first part of the review, I, I feel like River should just be a fold versus population. I didn't make it. Turns out I was correct in the moment and also correct in theory. But in practice, I think I didn't play that hand particularly well, in my opinion. On to the next one. We have a aggressive player with wide ranges raising middle position. We just call with the king queen. Check bet easy call. Turn jack check. Over bet again. Um, I guess call still. I guess there's some draws out there. He's going to have less draws. He's under the guns. He's going to have less flush draws, you would imagine. Um, he's kind of saying he has a jack here. Does a jack C bet this flop? Maybe. Maybe the ball's just so good for their range. Like King jack high under the gun, uh, middle position. Maybe he just does like bet all his jack X on the flop. He's now saying he's got a jack. Um, I don't think we can fold. 
And you say they've got a jack or you say they've got eight full or, or something like that. And um, we call me river two pairs. Check. So then checks back. I was wondering here if he bet, could we check raise? Like to could we like block kings full, we block we block kings pocket kings, we block pocket queens, etc. We block King Jack suited. It's like but is a one combo King Jack suited? King Jack of Clubs. And then if he does have a jack, if he has a hand like Jack Ten, um Ace Jack, does he have to fold that to a check raise? So this what well, this hand's been marked. On the river, would I check call or would I check raise if he bet? And we're not gonna be able to get the answer to that. Um, in fact, we're not even going to do this one in the solver now because it's kind of pointless. Because the, the one question I had was, do we check raise river if he bets? And we don't have the answer to that. Um, and we don't have ace jack and didn't value bet. On to this one. Ace jack. I'm not going to do this one in solver world either because there's been a limp. So we just quickly run through it. Um, this player, I checked this. He has a big pre-flop ISO, 42% ISO, um, so I'm just going to 3-bit the ace-jack purely here, versus, even though it's like middle position that's opened, uh, when normally ace-jack offers in middle position, I'm probably not even playing the hand, but when he's iso in as extremely as he is, he decided to 3-bit, um, we go multi-way, we flop an ace, and I was just lost, I played this hand this morning actually, um, and I was just lost, and I, now what, you know? Right in middle of range here. Maybe we shouldn't even bet. Maybe because we are just so in the middle of our range. We just have like pocket aces. We have ace king. We have ace queen. We maybe have some like king queen suited, etc. All these prefer betting over this hand. I think this might be a mistake. This bet. Um, it's like ninety two. This ninety one VP player calls. Turn to queen. We bet again. He calls. River the flush draw now gets there too. Um. We've got like an SPR of like not very much. Do we just jam this of value? Would probably not check folding to a 91 V pip. So do we just jump a value in the comments before you look at the answer? You get to this in this spot versus a 91 V pip. Are you just putting the rest in yourself? There's 54 more bigs. Are you putting the rest in yourself? Because we think if he's likely to check back an ace, but never fold it. So he's got like, I don't know, ace 10 off suit. Um, Ace nine off suit, ace eight off suit, etc. He's going to check that back probably, but never fold it. And then he's always going to bet his six x probably. He's always going to bet his flushes. So do we just put it in ourselves, or are we just check folding? Um, I went with put it in. Bill and called, and he he had pocket king, so <laughs> that was a nice result. Um, on to the next one, two queens. We three bet versus under the gun. We get a cold call. So this one's not going to be able to be reviewed in GTO either. Um, we have the over pair. We check. Checks through. Turn deuce. I bet two thirds pot or thereabouts. Fish call. Red call. River jack. Literally no idea. Just all in, I guess. I guess it's just all in, but I don't know. Is it all in? I mean, there's almost no side pot here against this guy. What is the side pot exactly? Uh, the side pot's six big blinds. So, you know, we, I just don't know. Is he ever going to bluff when check two because he needs to win the main pot too? So he's got no incentive to bluff. So can we just check here because this player, again, in the comments, please, uh, if this player isn't incentivized to bluff, because basically it's a six big blind side pot. Are we protected by checking here? Second question, do we just jam this under value still? I let it check. He checked back. And he had his 10 and the other guy had king 10. Um, so yeah, that was that hand. Last hand. Ace queen suited. Again, multi-way. We're not going to be able to review this in, in the solver. Um, top pair, check, 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 turn four, check, big bet, call, river, over bet, 
and we've discussed this earlier in the video. I think villains, villain over bets on rivers are just like they're not finding in anywhere near enough plus. I think when people do find these over bet plus, it's normally when they've got some like really important blocker. Um, given there's no potential flush out there, because that the, the, the obvious like the the shit red go to over bet bluff is when you've got the nut flush blocker. Isn't it? Um, so there's like a three flush on board, and you have the ace of you have the ace of the suit. Um, every shit rig in the world knows it's okay to overbet there. Uh, and these boards are people finding the overbets as much. Um, I mean, probably not. But we have ribbon two pairs. So basically, do we think population are sometimes bluffing here, or occasionally value betting worse? For this size, I don't think the value betting worse for this size. I don't think the bluffing up. I think they should just be a fold. Um, however, I called, and I was rightfully punished. So there you go. There's the end of the hands. I'm just going to take a few minutes to discuss another important topic um, on how my month's gone so far. So here we are with my month to date graph. This is all regular tables. Um, we got off to a absolute flying start. They hit a bit of a road bump, got back up to it, back to back up to peak again. Um, at that point, we were flying, and then all of a sudden, we just had a huge crash. This is like one of my biggest downswings in quite some while in terms of like um, number of buy-ins. We went from plus nine buy-ins to minus. Five buy-ins, so that's like a 14 buy-in downswing, a 280 euro downswing, and it was painful, not going to lie. Um, it started off with just a couple of standard uh, annoying spots versus regs, where we just lost a couple of buy-ins in quick succession. Then we had one particular session where we just like, after that, my play deteriorated, and I maybe gave two or three stacks away that I didn't need to give away. Not saying they were that complete monkey. It wasn't monkey tilt, but I just made decisions that I didn't need to fucking make, um, which is just bad. So that was like this. This was basically all one session. Then the next few sessions were just like, yeah, a bit May, then another shitty session. Um, tried to recover, did recover a little bit, and then had another shitty session, another shitty session. Then things were just going bad, basically. We just weren't well. I wasn't content with my game. I was like, my confidence had, had gone quite low. Um, I put a post in the Discord group. If you're not in the Discord group, there's a link beneath the video. Please do join it. Uh, just discuss it. Just basically, like, like I often do when things aren't going well, I just basically just like dump all my thoughts. Just have a random thought dump. Just dump them all. Hopefully some people are kind enough to attempt to comment and give some feedback, etc. And then we just try and get back on the horse, um, which is what we did. We ended up get climbing back out of the hole and into positive territory again, which made me feel quite good. And then the prick that is Duesenberg123 decided yesterday morning in the softest pool in history that he wanted to fucking go to war. And um, yeah, it didn't. Didn't go as good for me as it could have done. He took his pocket tens and beat my pocket queens when I flopped a set. He took his five six suited and beat my pocket queens. Um, I think I won a flip against him, and then I think there's another. So I think I had three out of. I think we played four one hundred big blind pots. And that cunt won three of them. Uh, so that pissed me off a little bit. Um, didn't tell him that, of course, at the time. I actually told him I was, if I'm going to lose, I'd prefer to lose to him than other people, which is actually true, to be fair. But it, it was me being far more magnanimous after the fact. And to be honest with you, that was at that, at that point, my graph was like this down here. And I didn't really speak to him. And, well, I, don't, not didn't really, I didn't speak to him until we'd got all the way back up here somewhere. So I was able to be magnanimous once we'd kind of got back to like peak profit for the month. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about was, how imp this just shows the importance of um, bankroll management. Because uh, people say often say to me, um, Reg, why don't you play higher? In fact, someone said it earlier this week, why don't you play higher, Reg, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I like to play with remarkable, remarkably like conservative bankroll management. I'm never going broke at 20 now. Literally never. There the can't be a downstream big enough for me to go broke. 
for me to like not have enough bankroll to play those games. Because if I did end up where I, I just lost a hundred buy-ins, I'd just be like, well, okay, um, you know, we've we've we're not winning anymore. We're not good at poker anymore. Let's just get a job or something like that. Um, and like I just got infinite infinite buy-ins for this, and that's not like a look at me I'm dead wealthy brag. But in terms of like poker bankroll, I've got infinite fucking buy-ins. Like I don't really keep a bankroll. I keep a, just a small amount of money on sites. And then I've, I've, I've got like a bank account. Uh, sorry, I've got my savings account in the Building Society. Then I have a bank account. There's, there's lots of layers to it. But I have plenty, fucking loads. Uh, and it's really important. Now, do I have enough to play 50 nil? Yes. Do I have enough to sustain a, a, a longer downstream than this? Because if I play 50 nil, my win rate's going to be lower. Uh, my variance is going to be higher. These 14 buying downstreams are going to be more common. Do I particularly want to... Um, play a game where I can routinely be having like 700 to 1,000 euro downswings. Not particularly. I play poker primarily. For, well, I play poker primarily to make a small side income to prevent me having to get a full-time job doing something I hate. That is my prime reason for playing poker. But I also play, huge part of the reason for my playing is I just love fucking playing. I love the game. I put. I can comfortably put 1500 hours a year in and just enjoy them or enjoy most of them um it's, it's my hobby it's my passion it's what i do uh, and i don't want to spoil that by playing for stakes that maybe i win more money long term but then i'm unhappy way more than often than i am playing 20 now i mean when this happened i was unhappy i was unhappy for a day or two and i had no actual real life worries because fine it's inconvenient to lose 300 euros but it has absolutely no impact whatsoever in my life none whatsoever if i lost it the same at 50 now if i lost 700 it wouldn't have a negative impact on my life it pissed me off even more than this one did but it wouldn't change anything uh, but that's not the point the point is that you know just like regularly going through these larger downstreams for more actual physical cash would would just spoil my enjoyment of the game it'd make me play less um, it'd just be bad. I just don't want to do it. So this is why I don't play higher. So I enjoy just play. I enjoy playing games that I know I fucking crush long term, and I enjoy playing games with co complete financial security that I'm never ever worried about the money. And uh, not once was I thinking, "Fuck me, I want this three hundred euros back." I was just thinking, "Fuck me, I want my graph to look fucking good again." That was the that was the motivation. Wasn't chasing the losses in terms of, "Oh, I need that money back. I need that money back. I've got to pay the rent or what have you." It was just, "Fuck me, I hate the way my graph looks. Let's try and fucking make it look a bit better as quickly as possible." Uh, but bankroll management is really important, and I. I know, I know the state of the situation. Most of my viewers are from the UK. I know the state of the UK right now. It's a fucking mess. Most of us don't have a pot to piss in. You know, so you're playing poker, you're playing whatever you're playing, 20 and L, but maybe you're playing it and you've only got like a 200 euro bankroll or a 300 euro bankroll or pounds bankroll or what have you. Um, Just play lower. Just play lower and earn, earn your bankroll, build your bankroll properly. I know it's not really thrilling. You know, if you're like going to work 35, 40 hours a week, you've maybe got a little bit of money to play poker with and you want the fun of the gamble. And it ain't much fun. You know, you grind 10 and L for 18 hours in a week and you have a good week and you make fucking 50 euros. Yeah, fucking hell. Will be 50 euros, big deal. And so it can be, you can be persuaded or you can just tempt yourself, but fuck it, just play higher, try and win more money. You know, go for the glory, if you will. Um, but these things, I mean, I'm a crusher in these games. I crush these games. I annihilate them. And um, I still had a 14 buying downswing in 4,000 hands. So, yeah, fair enough, some of it was bad play. But you're going to be subject to that too. You're going to be subject to a couple of things going wrong that are completely standard and then the wheels falling off. Um, you just need a bankroll. You need to be, I would say, as a conservative estimate, you want at least 30 buy-ins for the game you're playing in. I know a lot of people say 100. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking like fucking way more than, you know, I've got thousands of buy-ins for the game I play in if, if I needed them. But I would never need them because, as I said, if I had to dip into those levels of reserves, I would just stop playing the game. I'd find a different, I'd find something else to do. But yeah, you need to have at least 30 buy-ins. You need to be capable of moving down if you lose or... Um, if you've got some kind of expendable income, just stopping playing and then starting playing again when you can afford to reload to like at, at least 30 buy-ins. It's really important because this is not the first time it's happened to me in a while. 
it's just inspired me to, to have this conversation because, as you know, I, I talk to quite a few people about poker in Discord groups, used to in the Facebook group. Facebook group. I speak to quite a few players who aren't the most successful or who haven't been the most successful, Martin, Simon, Owen, etc., some other people too. Um, I understand how important it is them to like try to, to, you know, they love the game, they enjoy the game. Um, but the money means maybe more to some of them than others. And if the money's too important to you, it's going to be really hard to just make good decisions. Because, you know, if you're being faced a decision for like 20 euros and that 20 euros is 40% of your expendable income for the week, then it just makes the whole game a lot tougher. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Hope that's been a little bit of help. Bankroll management. You already know it. It's been done to death a million times. But do pay it heed. Because if this can happen to me, um, who's got a really, really strong win rate, um, it can happen to anyone. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to shoot off now. 40 minutes video. Um, hopefully, Simon's going back next week. We're definitely going to be talking to Owen again next week. I'm talking to Ryan tomorrow in a video that's going to go out next week. Simon should be back. I spoke to Simon yesterday, but we didn't do anything in terms of recording a video. Um, they're all doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody, and bye-bye for now.